Uh, good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folare. Uh, it's been a couple of days, but we're in the season. And um, so uh, here we are, and uh, thank God it's Friday. We're continuing in the subject of the season, the you know, first year anniversary of the Tinumbu administration. Um, our guest this morning is um, a man know, uh, known as SAS, uh, Senator Shuaib Afolabi Salisu. Uh, he's a senator of the Federal Republic representing Ogun Central uh, in the Gateway State. And um, his appearance tells you immediately, uh, perhaps, but not necessarily so, but the way he comes from a, a, in, the, in the gateway state. Uh, he's an Egba man, and um, that immediately comes out uh, when you see his presentation today. <laughs> it's a Friday, Friday thing in Ogun State. And what here you now are, now you've gone up to the Senate, but you are maintaining that. So everybody seeing you, remember your days in the state uh, civil service. Good, okay. Good, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, how are you, my brother? Oh, yes. Uh, if you are referring to my address, yes. I wear address because it is a policy of uh, the current administration in the state to deepen the address industry. So on every Friday, all those, all those who are in government mm -hmm. and civil service, they put on address. So even as I go to Abuja, I still represent Ogun State. Indeed. I still represent Ogun Center. <laughs> so whether in Abuja Kuta or in Abuja, or <laughs> in TVC studio Indeed. on a Friday. On a Friday. I must probably add on this very beautiful address. So everybody can sort of identify. So it's also know. part of uh, the economic uh, rejuvenation of the country mm -hmm. where you patronize the local industry. So just imagine the Adore ecosystem, those who sell the fabric, those mm -hmm. who sell the dry, mm -hmm. the, those who sell the cotton, those who sew it, those who oh, market it. So it's a big ecosystem of Adira. So, but it's not just about Adira, it also speaks to what we're here to discuss, how to diversify our economy. Indeed, I was going to say that, how that you've actually economy. started on that line. We the small and medium scale enterprises. Everywhere in the world, the small and medium scale enterprises constitute the bulwark of the economy. So, it also happens that in Abirikuta, Ogun Center, where I come from, Adira is our major uh, contribution. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you know about other countries where they also have a policy of one village, one product. So, in our own case, this is a case of Adore and Abekuta. So, anywhere you go, on a Friday in particular, and any other day for that matter, mm -hmm. put on Adore. You, you know, I'm so delighted that you started off like that because I was going to say that, um, and you yourself were going there. This exactly is uh, what the national objective uh, would be, to expand this whole idea, because we keep on hearing from the experts that uh, you know, we need to be a producer of something, an exporter of something. Uh, yes, we have our oil, uh, but there, they're saying that we're not even adding value. So economists have constantly been saying that until we begin to devise ways and means to do that on a scale where we can be taken as seriously as we need to be say, uh, taken, and so can attract foreign exchange, um, we, we still be quite, we still will be quite far. In this regard, in one year of the Tinumbu administration, this whole notion, this whole idea, um, do you think we've done anything in that direction? I think, I, I think if you talk about uh, Tinumbu administration in the last one year, before you can do a review of where you are, mm. it's also important to go back and establish the baseline where you used to be. And therefore, one year down the line, you could ask yourself whether you have made some progress or not. May 29, when Bala Ahmed Tinubu came on board as the president of the country, what was the situation of, of, the, of, of the economy? Mm -hmm. We were an economy that was almost on a life support. An economy that was more run like a voodoo economy than a properly run economy. We were paying 400 billion naira on a monthly basis as subsidy. Subsidy that has become more of a phantom for a few people to benefit from our common, I mean, uh, of our common wealth. We also had multiple exchange rates. I mean, it depends on what you wanted to do. We probably have up to four or five different exchange rates, including the exchange rate on the, uh, on, on, on the street. So, we were on the brink as a country 
So, characterized by three things. We have underutilization of resources, mm -hmm. and you can talk about, I mean, if you like, add corruption to it. If you also like, talk about uh, low production of our oil. You also had underinvestment in critical infrastructures. I mean, road, electricity, and a number of other things like that. And then the one that was even worse, we had a situation where arms of government were behaving as they were silos. We had a situation where Naira was redesigned or <laughs> designated by the CBA that had the responsibility of managing uh, monetary economy I mean, policy. And then you had a minister of finance saying, I was also, I'm not aware that Naira is being redesignated or being redesigned. That was the situation <clears throat> we had about a year ago. Pretty chaotic. Pretty, pretty chaotic. So within a one year, what has happened? Two major things that I believe form at the bedrock of a Tinubu uh, administration's economy policy. One was to remove the subsidy. Okay? So 400 billion era, monthly basis, in 12 months, you have an idea of the trillions of Naira that that was about 2% of our GDP. 2% of our GDP dedicated to subsidy that could not be accounted for. And the ridiculous part of this, you all remember, we had a COVID in this country. We had subsidy. Even during the period of COVID, where restrictions uh, were in place, the quantum of fuel being consumed didn't go down. The country was even paying more in subsidy. So that tells you something that the subsidy was a phantom. So he had to remove the subsidy. Number two, the multiple exchange rates has also to be collapsed. So let's have a single window. Let's have one half value. We will have one currency. Let's have one value of this currency. And by the way, these two policies were not something that came out of blues. We made the campaign issues. All the leading presidential candidates, including those who turned around to be criticizing these policies, also made it campaign issues. So the man came about. And he was courageous enough to say these two big elephants in the room, I must address them. So he announced the first subsidy remover. Indeed. He also streamlined the foreign exchange rate. Now this, what has happened? This was these were very difficult uh, decisions. Leadership is about taking these difficult decisions. But mm -hmm. what is important when it, I mean, you could have a chronic disease. I can be taking an analgesic for it. It doesn't take the pain away. It doesn't take, it doesn't take the ailment away. It gives some sense of false relief. But the ailment removes, remains. On the other hand, somebody could say, oh, yes, you need to do some surgical operation to get it removed. Surgical operation necessarily is going to be painful. But in the long run, it takes away the ailment and it also removes the need for medication on daily basis. So he took those decisions. But those are not the only decisions he took. He also recognized that in the meantime, we need to put some palliatives in place. So that was direct transfer to some vulnerable uh, families. That was also wage awards uh, to workers. So cushion the effect for transportation. And so, then there are also the issues of businesses. In order for business to also have some breathing space uh, to grow. Then they also focus on the infrastructure. In the meantime, yes. For those, and I'm using Lagos as an, as an example. Those who are familiar with Lagos will know that Tobilan Bridge was almost a bridge that now and then was going through one reconstruction, one palliative. In the last one year, you could see the difference of Tobilan Bridge. It's not limited to Tobilan Bridge. If you move from uh, Zaria to Kano, you also see the impact. If you move from Abuja to Kaduna, you also see that impact. If you also go to the eastern part of the country. So he put all of those things in place. And in order to also stimulate <clears throat> Economic development, we had to order major thing that we also should not look to get a, uh, focus on. We had a consumer credit that had just been put in place. If you had a consumer credit, you already a number of people, they could afford to buy a car, they could afford, afford to buy television on a long term basis. But we had a cash based economy that everything you wanted to buy, including buying a tire, you need, you need cash, you need television. So if you put a consumer credit in, in place, meaning that we know that you have the capacity to buy this over a long period of time. So there's a consumer credit. When you put consumer credit in place, you are not only providing a pathway for people to be able to afford things that make life comfortable for them. You are stimulating production. Because in that case, 
the manufacturers will have the incentive to produce because the citizens have the ability to pay. When they buy, economic gro growth takes place, more jobs are created. And on the other side as well, as more jobs are created, government is also able to collect more taxes. You know, you're very right with all of this. And um, looking at, um, um, looking at um, the presidency's or the president's worksheet, just as you are saying, all of these are well and good and will yield the results. Unfortunately, they come, these measures, these difficult decisions that have had to be taken, as you've said, that's what governance is all about. And the president himself has attested to it. In fact, the president has used the expression a number of times, I feel your pain. Um, the people, citizens, it's a difficult thing. As much as you are saying all of this, the money in my pocket is doing a lot worse than before you came on board. It's not just the money in your pocket. It's, it's your standard of living. The, the cost of transport. All of this is worse. I think the first thing we must acknowledge that these are indeed very trying times for Nigerians. I mean, that, that's no, there's no need to be equivocal about that. Food inflation has set Food in. inflation has set in. The cost of transportation, all of this. But you see, it's a difficult situation. If you do, you're damned. And if you don't? If you don't, you're damned. So, the president could have come in and then also manage the situation as it were. Mm -hmm. Well, Tinubu's mantra was that we, we're not about to let our country go down. We, if, you had, if, if you had not done some of this, I mean, the question is this. Was it necessary to remove the subsidy? Yes. Was it necessary to collapse the various multiple exchange rates? Yes. Would they necessarily bring some pain? Unfortunately, the answer is also yes. And therefore, so we feel the pain of Nigeria. And I think the president has also acknowledged that. And that's why a number of those palliatives that are in place, we must salute the resilience of Nigerians. I mean, we must thank them for showing understanding. Things are pretty. I mean, I come from Abekota. I live within the people I interact with them. I know the challenges that they face too. I know the pains they are undergoing. But what we require as leaders is to continue to explain to people mm -hmm. that we're building a house. In the course of the building a house, the family house, a number of things that we are used to on the dining table, maybe up the tiny table for some moment. But guess what? In another two, three years, That's in another six months, yeah. it's like you are fasting. Whether you are fasting for 30 days, whether you are fasting for 40 days, you know that, oh, there's a timeline for this fasting. It's going to come to an end, and I'm going to have a celebration. That is what we need to continue to explain to Nigerians. A president like Bola Tinubu couldn't come and deliberately inflict pains on the people. But then it will also be less of a Bola Tinubu if he came on board and he meant what he meant and he failed to provide the leadership that the country required at this point in time. This is the dilemma of leadership. And I think he has demonstrated courage, he has demonstrated boldness, and the other hand as well, he has also been nimble enough that when people say, oh, this is so painful, we need to also do a few things like this, it's also nimble enough to come back and say, okay, yes, I heard you. I mean, you see the issue of uh, the student loan as an example. Yeah. When we also have the student loan on board, it also means we this can This is an innovation. Well, it, it, it's not as if it, he, he, or he originated it. But he certainly has launched it. It's it, it because you also take courage to do so. Yes. The truth of the matter is this. We have an education system, particularly tertiary education, that the infrastructure decay is on the rise. The academic staff, the non-academic staff are not being paid what I believe to be commensurate. So, I mean, our, our, the best of our professors, they earn less than five hundred dollars In fact, they probably say they earn less than $400 a month for their contribution. And they, yes, we want them to teach, we want them to, to do research, we want them to contribute to society. Their colleagues, I mean, and then to also be able to attend international journals, international conferences. So we also need to take a look at it. But then if you also want to charge, I mean, at least to recover some of the cost, it also means the cost to the student will also go up. The innovative way to do so it's not also bringing the student loan into the place. And when the student loan was first launched, 
And people say, no, the criteria for assessing the student loan mm. ah, is such that some people mm -hmm. don't have access to it. Mm -hmm. It came back to the National Assembly, and we also expeditionally did a review of that and came up with a student loan. So he has demonstrated courage of leadership. He has also demonstrated <coughs> being nimble, being humble enough to say, I think we need, it. We need to take a fresh look at this. This is, this is a different kind of leadership, it needs to be said. And then thirdly and finally, we have leadership that you can feel, not an anonymous leadership. And it's important to emphasize that. The country is certainly under a leadership that we can feel, not a leadership that is anonymous. We know the box stops at somebody's death. Well, he, he and that person is Bolatinobu. He arrived with the mantra of a, a renewed hope. And um, what you're saying is pointing in that direction. Even as, and this is without prejudice to the difficulties that the president himself has acknowledged exist, uh, but that we're going to have to work through. When you look at those, uh, when you look at his selection of um, the, his cabinet, for example, yeah. they've been given their report in recent times. And um, I guess there's, there's, much to, there's, much to, there's much to cheer about uh, in the cabinet. Absolutely, there's much to cheer. Um, particularly, first and foremost, again, some of the things that the president has put in place, that may not be appreciated immediately, include the evaluation system that they put in place, the delivery unit. That's, that's, that's to a hold the minister, the, the minister they sign a performance bond. One year down the line, they are given the scorecard of the various ministries. By the way, the National Assembly has also embarked on some sec sectoral uh, uh, review. A number of ministers have been outstanding, I must say, and I must also acknowledge that some ministers have performed less than expected. Okay. And I do hope that the delivery unit that the president has set up will also take cognizance of that and begin to see how we need to tweak. I mean, the same you, speed. You, you think that um, in, in a year, because when you talk about the overall performance, oftentimes you hear from people that um, maybe it's a bit too early to decide in just a year or less than a year. But do you think that the time we've had is indeed enough for people to see who is moving in the right direction? For the ministers, okay, for the economy as a whole. Yes, for the economy. For the economy as a whole, and for what the, minister, uh, the president is doing as a whole. One year, maybe two, okay. short. Okay. I mean, because, mm -hmm. for instance, our, our oil production, I mean, has improved tremendously. I mean, we have, we are, we are, we are, we are hoping around 1.7 million barrels per day now, mm. apart from a condensed state, and a number of other things are going on. But for the ministers, you can see traction in some of the ministers. Some of the ministers, they have not performed up to standard. We must be clear in saying this. And the president, I mean, without, I don't want to start mentioning the ministers one of our, yeah, yeah, yes, one. yes, yes, yes. For instance, I can measure some of the ministers that I think they're perform. I chair the Senate Committee on Asset and Cyber Security. So, for instance, I can see the Minister of Digital Economy. I can see the three million youth that are being trained on a daily basis. I can see that we're having okay. a national strategy on IT, on artificial intelligence. If you also see the Minister of Interior, you can also see a few, I mean, development in terms of uh, uh, same thing with agriculture, same thing. And, and well, those two that you just mentioned, those are sort of technology based, and that's your background. That's I want to leave it. My that's, that's just, your I background. Say, I, yeah, that's so you can really background. evaluate yeah. uh, what's been going on. Because for me as well, one of the things that I also believe that we need to continue to do, and we're on the right side. We are building national capacity now. Really, we need to be very, we need to be very clear. Wealth of nations. Is no longer measured by the, uh, the quantum of deposits you have in your hard cross. It's by the intellectual capital that your citizens carry. And that's why you can have citizens of this country, they can be resident here and they can be any dollar. So you can see that the Minister of uh, Communication and Digital Economy were training 3 million youth in modern technologies. Whether they are here, whether in any other place, they remain Nigerian assets. Okay? If you also use, see the way we also deploy technology in terms of passport management as, as an example, you could also see traction. In fact, it is, it is my, 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 my theory that the cost of governance, the corruption that we talk about so much, can be significantly reduced if you deploy more technology. 
And I'll give you a simple example. Some years ago, if you wanted to go to Abuja from Lagos, you would need to rush to, to the airport to buy your ticket, and you were going to meet a lot of touts waiting for you to help you buy ticket at a premium. But as I was speaking in this studio now, if I want to go to Abuja, here, yeah, I'll buy my ticket Indeed. here, and I'll go. Things are changing. There used to be a time as well that even when you wanted to obtain a visa at the UK or US, you go to water currency and start skimming them at 4 a.m. But now you book up. The same thing we need to begin to do for some of our key business processes of government so that government services could be more readily accessible to citizens at a lower cost. And we're on the right track. And we're on the right track in that direction. When you build it, when you finish building the capacity, you need to build the capacity of people who can deploy such technology. And then you need to begin to minimize the discretion available to government officials to determine whether mm -hmm. to give you mm -hmm. one service or the other. And that is at the core. I suppose the most dramatic aspect, you know, uh, showing of that was uh, by the minister, Pumi uh, Ojo. And uh, now it's just a couple of weeks to get a passport. And he, I don't know. It's surprising that he, he, from this administration, was able to do that, which goes back to the choice of men that Tinobu chose. Um, how could he do, how could he, 204,000 you know, outstanding passports he said he met when he came. How could he sort that out in two and a half weeks? Two things. Number one, I also believe that leadership matters. Yes. If a herd of sheep is being led by a lion, everybody will see the entire thing as mm. a lion, as, mm. as, 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 mm. as, as mm. a herd of lions. Mm. If on the other hand, you also have lions, all lions being led by a sheep, <laughs> the other side will see them as being sheep. So I think the first thing, I think the president himself has given a very clear indication of performance starting with come and sign a performance bond with me. And I'm going to measure you with that. And I also think the second thing is that also the individual ministers also bring what they have. Uh, we're talking about minister. By the way, the minister was also a member of National Assembly. So we're also proud to say it was one of us before he went to the executive branch of, uh, of, of government. And I also think the other side of it as well, himself as, 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 as an individual, he also listens to the hues and cries mm. of Nigeria to say, this is no rocket. This is no rocket science. And when you are determined to make a change, you can make that change. So a number of other ministers have also performed. I mean, this is not the time uh, to extract the ministers. I probably have the opportunity to do so as a member of the Senate when the Senate is doing sectoral review. But generally, we've had a lot of traction by some of the ministers, and some of the other ministers they have not found their footing. They have not. They are, They have been anonymous, so to say. And I believe in this one year, the man who has appointed them, uh, who they report to, mm. who possibly have a better understanding mm. of why some of them have not, I mean, to, to, the, public, uh, to the public satisfaction deliver. They probably understand what they are, what they are constrained. They probably understand what their challenges are. But looking from outside, uh, we can say, oh, yes, quite a large number, maybe a higher, a higher number of uh, of our ministers are performing because but, they're also taking care Exactly. But on a scale of balance, given what we've seen now, um, uh, quite a lot has been positive, encouraging. Not all, you know, as in any human endeavor. Uh, but with that, looking, moving into the second year, uh, this probably gives reason for hope because um, this president has already indicated that he's a man in fact, he, he's primed himself, his administration, in a way where there can be constant reviews. There are all sorts of innovations, and then reviewing, because of the mechanism that he has set up, this sort of leads to uh, one having a sort of a positive um, hope, you know, hope for into the next year, it's going to be better, much better. I, I, I have no doubt about that. You know, a number of the initiatives that are taking place now, they will begin to materialize more. Uh, I mean, for instance, the government has set up a presidential committee to harmonize taxes. When you reduce, as we speak, I understand we have close to 90 taxes. If those taxes are harmonized and brought to a reasonable number, and then the, the businesses have less taxes to contend with, it means that cost of production will be improved. 
By the way, even in, even in the energy sector, we can see some traction in electricity. It has not been as uh, manifest as we thought it should be, but don't forget that our president, our German president, our German uh, uh, chancellor, they signed a contract on Siemens to deploy some electricity. I even understand that about a month ago, we had one of the, I mean, the highest generation of electricity, over 5,000 megawatts, generated, transmitted, and distributed. We also have some other initiatives that are going on in electricity. By the time we are approaching the uh, middle of next year, mm. some of these things will materialize. We've we'll seen improvement in the in energy sector. Uh, the oil production that has improved will lead to more foreign exchange and for the country. So I, I, I am extremely hopeful that uh, the glass of Nigeria, the cup of Nigeria is, uh, is, uh, is half full and not, uh, not uh, half uh, uh, empty. So in the meantime, Nigerians, again, we must continue to thank Nigerians for their patience, for their resilience. Because at the end of the day, they bear the brunt of some, some of these reforms. But what is important is to know that this is being done for the long-term development, long-term sustainability of our economic growth. And you can also see some traction in terms of, you know, I've not, I have stayed away from causing statistics. But even in terms of GDP growth, we have seen some traction in, in terms of GDP growth. But we can't be talking about that when we say have hyperinflation to contend with, when the cost of food items is still very high, when the cost of transportation is still very high. But I have no doubt that some of those things will taper down as we approach the end of the year. And the implementation of 2024 budget is in full, uh, is in, is in full swing. And we can see a number of infrastructure projects that are going on. When some of those things, I mean, just about two days ago, the president commissioned, I mean, uh, the, the railway station, I mean, the, the Abuja Metropolis, uh, 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 I mean, railway. When you begin to put all those infrastructure in place, they ease the cost of transportation. Invariably, they reduce the cost of production and even the living cost uh, for the people. So, like just say, I share your optimism, extreme optimism that things are looking up north for the country. Okay. Um, just to put you on, uh, sort of inform you, uh, we're cutting away um, uh, because there's a live event. I'll be able to tell you exactly where. But uh, as you know, you can always you know, link up with us uh, again on YouTube uh, to continue uh, with the program. Uh, that's for viewers on the terrestrial service, uh, but our viewers in diaspora, uh, we're still together, as it were. So uh, as you were saying, we're still, we're still live and we're still going out, uh, but a, a live crew is going off to an event that I can't tell you anything about as a more fact, <laughs> but the event probably has happened now. So. We're, just, we're looking at one year of the Tinubu administration. There's much reason for hope, the renewed hope mantra he came in on. Uh, we've seen aspects of it, but it's also been a very difficult year. There's no way you can, you know. Absolutely. You, 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 there's no way you sort of can dress it up. And um, Nigerians are just hoping that sooner rather than later, the worst will be behind us. Uh, but they're... The, monu the, the, the monumental things that have happened, you've enumerated some of them. Uh, you, you're looking at the, the new uh, the student's uh, loan uh, aspect. That is something that, uh, that has not happened before, uh, where you don't need to know anybody. That's the one aspect to it. You actually don't need yeah, to know And technology is going to drive that as well. I mean, Indeed, so, all of these are... So the student loan application process, I mean, the, the criteria for... Uh, I mean, and we have seen this, it's not a rocket science. An example, I, I mean, and I would like to give this example. We have seen what a federal agency has used technology and the right mix of leadership to achieve. And I'm talking about Joint Administration and Matriculation Board as an example, Jam. This is a federal government agency. Somebody also decided to use that as a model of what is possible mm -hmm. with federal agencies. Okay. So I think we are on that track, mm -hmm. and I think we need to continue to use technology uh, to reduce the cost of governance, make governance People need to have easy access to obtain passport, uh, driving licenses. When some of those things just move, in move into the digital age, as yeah. other countries. Let me bring. I beg your pardon. A viewer has called in. Good morning, uh, Mr. George. Thank you for holding on a bit. Good morning, Eric. Thank you and for calling uh, in. Good morning to our guest, the senator, good Senator morning. Salisu. Yes, Uncle, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, no, 
uh, Uncle Yuri, uh, you know, the last time we spoke, I expressed my reservations about the Minister of Agriculture, and I said I was going to listen to his uh, call card he was going to present. Yes. And I did listen. Yes. I did listen, and I was surprised to see some of the things he was doing, which I, I can uh, give him an average call. But we need uh, ministers that perform above average. That average call. My concern is that the uh, the minister, I mean the, the government, is not talking. The Buhari government suffers from the same thing. Doing things and people are not aware. The the way the election of 2023 went and the way and politics has been taken to social media. Those who did not win want to get Nigeria down because they, they cannot have it. Mm -hmm. They are creating false narratives and, you know, to gullible Nigerians. The government needs to do something about it. If I were the president, I would copy for, from what the Americans are doing. Every day there should be press briefing by a special assistant to the president for that purpose, giving account of what the government is doing to counter the, uh, the misinformation that is there in the social media. Some people are doing it deliberately to run Nigeria down because they cannot have it. It was the same thing that the current president in America did. You know how Donald Trump uh, uh, won the election that he, he won? through the social media misinformation. But when this man managed to come, he now adopted a system where every day, whatever has been mis mis uh, mis 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 misdirected to people on the social media, the government will clarify it. You don't allow it to think because right. the population is still a little or even much gullible. All That's right. my candid advice for Mr. President. Okay. I, I, I want to give him uh, kudos so far, so good. We are moving, and we 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 shut up prison ourselves. The ministers that Uncle Yori, you remember that I was uh, propagating some names before they were appointed. I'm happy the minister, the, the government, the, the president picked some of them, and the ones he picked have not disappointed me. Indeed, I'm very very proud. All right then. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mr. George, for calling in. Appreciate your call. Um, I'll take a break now uh, so that uh, we can continue with this.